What up, Hell Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again, here with my husband. I don't think I've ever seen someone wearing a crown look so unhappy. Are you good? Is everything okay? I feel like a jester. <laughs> Why? You know, jesters like... don't wear crowns. Ooh. <laughs> Everybody having a good time. If you don't laugh, they cut my balls off. I don't want that. I've decided that I would like to get some use <laughs> out of this very expensive crown. Whether I like it or not. <laughs> and I wore it in the last two videos we shot. Right. So I thought yeah. my husband would be a team player I look like a and dork. wear it in this one. You looked very handsome. My wife is one of these people, like she loves me so much and I love her for loving me as much as she does. <laughs> But she loves me so much, she can't give me constructive advice. <laughs> I look bad in that crowd. I think you look handsome. Thank you, baby. <laughs> you and my grandmother would agree. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Today, we are here to watch Tear Zoo. Insects, let's go. The insect tier list. I like insects a lot. I think praying mantisai are like A tier. My and they're going to be on the list. I think that all bugs are gross. And I hate Wait a them. minute. Wait a minute. They are gross, but they're cool. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Learn a lot about them. Also support murdering them. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> I love bugs. And My insects. husband is very excited about this video. I, am. I should maybe let him have it, but I won't. Give me your bet. What's your S tier insect? Um, my S tier insect is gonna be the scorpion. Okay, that's an arachnid. That was a different one. Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Then I thought scorpions were bugs. So. Alrighty. Well, what about? Okay, what about? What if we do like a beetle of some sort, or like a roach? No, not a roach. Roaches are definitely. I'll do silverfish. Okay, that's right. gonna be bottom tier. You're not even trying. I'm excited to see what this video has in store for us. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Play of the game. You're powered up. You didn't know what that's from. Oh. You had any idea what that's a reference to? No. That's Overwatch. There's a guy, there's a ninja character, and when he says all those words that are actually words, and he pulls out a sword and he cuts people up. No, I need a healing. I need healing. Insects are one of the most broken Sick. factions the game has ever seen. Nowhere else in nature will you find such there an incredible concentration of abilities that are not only overpowered, but also <laughs> extremely weak. It's tough to even know where to start when talking about what makes insects such a successful group, because in a lot of cases, it's not just that their individual abilities are overpowered, but some of them feel like they should be mutually exclusive, since they're just insanely so OP pretty. when used in combination with one another. You You'll see what I mean once I get into the tier list, but first, a brief overview of the insect faction's general attributes Fourteen. and history. Wow. Okay. Insects were added to the game during the early Carboniferous expansion. The devs bumped up the atmospheric oxygen level, which allowed members of the arthropod faction to adopt larger sizes and more costly abilities. Massive. And while most of the arthropod player base was trying to dominate the land by leveling up their size, a small offshoot of the crustacean player base opted to forego the gigantism trait and instead used this oxygen bonus to unlock an ability never before seen in game, flight. Because these new really? creatures were the very yeah. first to gain the ability to fly, the air became entirely their domain for the time being, and would remain that way so until delicious. reptiles unlock the ability several expansions later. Insects are extremely diverse in their abilities oh. and stat spreads. In fact, they're so diverse that it's impossible to wow. include them all in a single video. I'll be keeping things fairly generalized, Beetle. but truth be told, many of the groups I'll be discussing today have so many standout members that they could easily be an entire tier list in and of themselves. Right. So it's a little tough to pin down their general attributes, but there are a few commonalities. Okay. Being members of the Arthropod faction, all insects are granted the exoskeletal armor perk which greatly raises their AC compared to soft-bodied builds of similar sizes, with the only downside being a massive reduction in those same defensive stats for a short time every time the player levels up. 
This makes insects quite tanky on average, allowing them to excel in combat. The insect build also has access to the compound eyes perk, which grants them vastly improved awareness. <laughs> In my face, I was not ready. There's a lot going on at the very start you have to get through, but yeah. you look like you're doing okay. Compared to other arthropods like scorpions and centipedes, with 360 degree vision, their ability to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets while flying is far superior to most other flyers. Oh. This enhanced perception curve is important because insects tend to have naturally high stealth. Oh, so God. in order to compete with other insect builds, acute vision is required. We've only just scratched the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to, though. For a more in-depth look, let's get into the tier list. I'm ready. At the bottom... Uh, he was talking all that shit! Yeah, cuz... Did you see what tier it is? <laughs> yes, yeah, F tier. Or whatever. <laughs> what are you celebrating? Because you said it wasn't even going to be on the list. I said it was F tier. No, you said it wasn't going to be on there. Barely surviving. <laughs> Wait till you... Good job, though. Good job. I knew it. Also, while we have a break, you know, I see that he's also covering other insects he's covered in past videos. Yeah. And he did mention he might be going through some different things. I least have the channel for a while. Yeah. So you might actually see scorpions on here potentially get like a mention when he goes through some spiders and stuff. So some of the tier list, we have the silverfish. The silverfish is the most primitive insect build still in existence. It kind of blurs the line between what is and is not considered an insect. Really? And not in a good way. Unlike other flightless insects, which decided to yeah. respec and drop the flight ability in favor of more refined strategies, right. the silverfish build actually never had access to it in the first place. <laughs> Aside from having an exoskeleton, they don't really have any of the abilities that make insects powerful. They do not have wings and have essentially no combat abilities. They have very low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything, yeah. with their yeah. only useful stat being their decently high movement speed. Their they special ability fast. allows them to gain XP from eating cellulose and lignin, huh. meaning they can farm XP from wooden structures, which normally don't grant any experience. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak combatants, they tend to actually stick to urban areas, <laughs> feeding on things like paper and cloth, yeah. in the relative safety of houses, apartments, and office spaces. I used to always find them in Even there, books. they aren't completely safe though. Damn! And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta, the silverfish's extreme lack of useful abilities oh, places it firmly sis. in F tier. That's honestly the only insect build I believe deserves an F tier ranking. Damn. Okay. I would like to know how they uh, procreate. I bet we could have went through that because they're still around. Just which like a which means that they are constantly, you know, <laughs> laying eggs. And There's just so many of them. They can't all be dead. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So like, that's one thing that you really should think about when something lasts that long. It's got a very effective life cycle, actually. Yeah. And like that deserves to be talked about, you know, D tier at best. It's been around for too long to be F tier. I, I don't think I want to know anything about the, the life cycles of bugs. Thank you. True. Roaches are disgusting, so. Most Just insects are that. quite viable, and even the less viable ones tend to have at least a few useful things going for them, okay. even if those things aren't necessarily broken. <laughs> First in D tier, we have the Phasmid build, which includes walking sticks and leaf mimics. These builds sport They're what are so unquestionably cool. some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire game, yeah. second only to color-changing builds like the octopus and Thanks. chameleon. As impressive as these are, though, the question I constantly end up asking is, is this really necessary? <laughs> Why? <laughs> because with the exception of insects which deliberately lower their stealth as part of the aposematic coloration strategy, right. insects as a whole already have an above-average yeah, stealth oh and are usually able to maintain this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. Uh -huh. Their camouflage can only take them so far. While they're near undetectable while remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food. Right. And while they do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't I perfect. Never knew that. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment where camouflage doesn't match as well, their instincts to sway and move can actually end up giving their position away even more, <laughs> rather than aiding in their attempts to hide. Some phasmids do possess chemical defenses, Ew. but as we'll see further up the tier list, Ew. this attack is quite mild compared to the heat some other insects are packing. Ew. Phasmids have a similar game plan to sloths, complete with all the major flaws this strategy is riddled with. <laughs> Although at least phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. <laughs> Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. 
At first glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat, Oof. with extremely squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Abyss. Many of the larval forms of these builds are 100% defenseless and have a mobility stat in the single digits, literally the freest kills in the game. <laughs> However, the Leopard player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Uh -huh. Caterpillars and adult leopards alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in, and some designed to intimidate. Boom, I okay. love that one. But yeah. you just talk shit about stick bugs and leaf bugs for doing the same thing, but now all of a sudden that is a butterfree, okay? Now it's cool? Yeah, you know, mm. he has a real... Hmm. He has a real idea about the ability of flight. He really thinks that that is like a very important, prominent ability, especially for migration purposes. Yeah. Hunting, gathering, escaping prey. I yeah. mean, they could do the same things they do and fly. <laughs> like that literally could be a stick bug with wings. Yeah. It would change nothing about his life. And yet they just said, cut him off. I just want to walk in and do this thing. You don't need him. I jig. I don't fly, I jig. Okay. Granted, these strategies often don't hold up against high intelligence builds, but it does help. Some caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses, Spiky. like spines and toxins, which make them <laughs> simply not man. worth the potential damage to take on. You and credit where credit is due, even though they still are fairly defenseless, butterflies and moths do have excellent mobility and can fly much greater distances than most insect builds. This enables them to avoid high conflict areas of the map and reach higher quality loot that might be too rare for most players to rely on. Their massive wings, in addition to being highly customizable so for a cool variety looking. of stealth or intimidation purposes, also just make them look much larger than insects of comparable body sizes, right. which helps dissuade attacks. But ultimately, leopards still take plenty of L's, and most high tier insect builds have quite oppressive matchups against them. So they're definitely a below average faction. What was the moth even That's doing? actually it for D tier, and I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, but again, insects are a massively successful faction. Right. And are gonna be concentrated in the higher tiers. Absolutely. That Cockroach! I was so ready. What's up? Um what was I gonna say about freaking butterflies? You were making fun of that one for just being stuck. Yeah, because what was he do? Oh, you know, the thing with butterflies, right? is I feel betrayed by them. Mm -hmm. Because I always thought that butterflies were so cute and so beautiful right. and so pretty. They're horrifying. Mm -hmm. They are terrifying. so ugly. Especially up close. Yes. And then the more you learn about them, the more you learn that they're <laughs> death mongers. Like, yeah. I was just like... <laughs> so I think that's, that's where my disdain for butterflies comes from. Like every time I see a butterfly, I fail to be impressed because I'm just like, I know who you really are. My first, the mask has fallen. My first experience with that was with poop butterflies on yeah. the farm, mm -hmm. the little gray ones. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, they're, they're so cute. They're so cuddly. And then they're like, where are they at? By poop. 24-7. That's disgusting. That's all they want. That's gross. Interested in nothing else. That's nasty massively successful faction, and are gonna be concentrated in the higher tiers. Cockroach. At the bottom of C tier, we have the Cockroach. <laughs> the Cockroach is the ultimate survivor, oh. which opted to spec into mobility, so stealth, and a multitude of elemental resistances in lieu of any offensive abilities. Okay, if the video is in this, then we'll just watch it in this, but I saw a video of like doing the stats of cockroaches. Mm -hmm. But some things that we know about cockroaches, they can swim for a very long time. Uh -huh. They're really hard to crush. They can flatten their little bodies. Uh -huh. They can birth like 20, 30 cockroaches at a time and drag around the little sack before like it hatches. Please stop talking. Just, we're done. <laughs> and they can fly. Uh, we're done. Okay. While they don't pack much heat, look, look, their look, flat look, look, shape look. allows them to look. easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely ah! difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather clumsy flyers, but they do have an above average ground movement speed, ah! enabling them to quickly scurry disgusting. to cover if they see a predator player approaching. However, when caught out in the open or backed into a corner, they're fairly helpless and easily one of the most Stop vulnerable builds it. in the entire Stop insect faction. It. They're yeah. like the secretary. Ah! It's like our favorite bird. Secretary birds are great. They're fairly helpless and yeah, easily one of the most yeah. vulnerable no. builds in the entire insect faction. They're also somewhat carried by human mains, making temperate and tundra ah! servers viable for them, 
because really, as impressive as their toxin and radiation resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold, and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans unlocking the fire control ability. The biggest variants may be able to tank one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they fail to outright escape a fight. Could you imagine if cockroaches could fight? Oh my god. Could you imagine if they fought back? What a terrifying insect. Earwig! Next in C tier, we have the earwig, a fearsome looking generalist build, which appears to have a giant pair of mandibles on its yeah, rear end yeah. called Cersei. As fearsome as these Cersei forceps are, if we actually check the earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, <laughs> its power stat is actually quite mediocre. <laughs> Please, no. Ah, uh, no. Stop it, earwig. <laughs> Menacing as the Cersei are, the actual piercing damage they can deal is fairly minimal, and can even be deflected by the most basic Jesus of armor. Christ. Is that and even against amazing? builds without yeah. armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching an earwig, Damn. and can attack without restraint. Damn. Still, just because they can doesn't mean they do, as the earwig's intimidation factor alone is oh. oftentimes enough to protect it from conflict. And it's credit where credit is due, the forceps are actually fairly decent in matchups against soft-bodied insects, and allow the earwig to carry their targets much better than they could with their jaws. Oh. And while it may Yeah. They be doing a thing. They be doing a thing. He just bit off a piece of his leg! He just chewed him up like a chicken wing. He went to Popeyes. Ordered delivery. Seems silly to have opted for rear-facing weapons. Like my wife. <laughs> Oh, it's talking about your rear-facing weapon. <laughs> the position does actually serve a purpose, in that it allows earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces, where they can hide out and avoid conflict altogether. Why? Of all of the weapons insects have access to, Cersei might be some of the <gasps> most unorthodox, which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate other players. Is this a yellow However, jacket? However, I think to get out of mm -hmm. mid-tier, Earwigs need to actually have the ability to back up their threat display. Yeah. They would do well to spec into some sort of venom. Venom-infused stings are a fairly common attribute for insects, so this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So, while certainly a viable mid-tier, don't overestimate this build's abilities. <laughs> you just like... At the top of C all. tier, we've got the Orthopterans, including grasshoppers, crickets, and katydids. I don't know if how you said that. But what, what if Katie didn't? I have PTSD, y'all. PTSD? I have PTSD. Uh-huh. Wow. The Great Locust Invasion. Oh, <laughs> man. Tell the story real quick. Of 2019. Yeah. We had an invasion of freaking grasshoppers, disgusting. man. It was so disgusting. I'm going to put the video in here. Just a little one. Absolutely. You want to see it. It was awful it was i had to walk home in that i had to not walk all the way home but i had to walk to my car yeah. in that and i literally called my husband and i was like i'm not coming home i'm staying in the hotel i like i can't i was like what are you talking about <laughs> like what do you mean you're not coming home and then she sent me the video and i was like oh my god don't let him in the car they're going to have to get in the car. How are you going to get in without them getting in the car? They're going to be all over your body. Dude, it looked like it looked like a swarm of rain, but it was it, just it grasshoppers. Was, oh it was so disgusting. Was, when you walked, you could hear them crunching underneath your feet. They if they and the ones that weren't flying up towards your face right. were crunching and it was so gross. And so to make it to my car, I literally just sprinted screaming the entire way. Like I'm sure somebody thought I was being murdered. Right. And then I just like I paused for a second which was terrifying. Mm -hmm. But I paused for a second, made sure there were no bugs by the door of my car, mm -hmm. because if there was a cricket in my car, I would have died. Could you I, imagine? I literally would have, because I, I would have, if, if, imagine I'm driving on the freeway, right. and then and there's then a cricket. And then they just show Ooh. up. Could you imagine being in the car the whole time, chilling? Yeah. And then they just start crawling from under no. the seats? Nope. These are the first mobility-centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. Flight is an excellent defense. What did that man just say? Saltatorial? <laughs> spell it. I can't spell it. 
spell that word? Ability centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial. 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 I mean, is it how it? If you spell it how it sounds, it's easy. Saltatorial. S A L T A L. Salta. No, not T A L. Sorry. S A L T A T O. R I A L. You nailed it. You nailed it. You're a freaking, <laughs> you're, you're a freaking whiz. In their wings. Flight is an excellent defensive ability, oh! as it allows the user to get out of reach of an attack's range. But oh, this utility is lessened if their ability to get airborne has too much startup lag. Ooh, and so instead of using their wings to get themselves up into the air, a powerful jump Yo. enables the Arthopteran <laughs> maze to escape vertically bit, at instant he speed. Bit a piece of their their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. He and really because their jump has such up. excellent frame data, like he's ready. landing an ambush strike on an Arthopteran can feel near impossible <laughs> at times. That's why humans would die. Could you imagine something crawling up behind you that slow the entire time? You just be like, I think something behind me. And you look at it, it's ready to kill you. <laughs> it's ready to fucking pounce. These guys are fearless, man. I think man. humans should have been born with the same kind of eyes that flies and bugs have. Yeah, but the, yeah, but. No. <laughs> on an orthopterin can feel near impossible that's, at times. That's a terrifying And even if a right player there. does manage to secure a grab, their powerful hind legs can function as He's quite an effective him. combo break. Oh. The spines on their legs augment that's the so damage cool. their kicks can deal. I never saw meaning those. that if a grasshopper can tank the first few hits of an ambush attack, they may be able to turn the tide of a confrontation and escape after dealing They're, serious damage him. to the attacker. He's eating him. With that said, I think there are a few flaws in their strategy, which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Okay. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. <laughs> in a similar <laughs> manner to the flying fish, <laughs> yeah. using such a drastic <laughs> escape option can sometimes end up putting you in a worse position than you were before. Especially Damn. if your Jesus. local meta has a lot of spider players. And although they do present a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks and can either tank the damage outright or one hit the grasshopper before <laughs> it even has a chance to retaliate. He is kicking him though. He is kicking At the bottom him. of B tier, we have the Hemipterans, a diverse order of insects with a few things in common, ah! including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield shaped. Those guys are annoying. However, the most notable thing is that rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts, the Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. That it means it's like an armored straw for a mouth, and that's hilarious. For the majority of Hemipteran builds, this allows them to farm XP from sources Isn't that, that are normally cool? hard to access, like the energy-dense sap inside trees and stems, or the starch inside of seeds. However, there are some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Their venom is powerful enough to one-shot just about any other insect, and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs tend to actually have fairly uh, low stealth, bugs. opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. And on top of all that, they have fairly low mobility, making actually ambushing another player kind of difficult if they're actually paying enough attention oh, to simply yeah, dodge the attacks yeah. and flee. Some do break this trend though, and opt for both better camouflage and high aquatic How mobility, cool. making them some of the most fearsome aquatic <laughs> builds in the game. On the yeah. herbivore side- That was so cool. Did you Did see it just that? take out that frog? Yeah. Look at it, he flew right into Do break him. this trend though, Boom. and opt for both better camouflage and high aquatic mobility. See how he's got like the grippers too, like they grab him in, you know what I mean? You see that? He... <laughs> If you had that kind of nose, you wouldn't have to have me open up your drinks. Just pierce it and You're sniff. So dumb. You're so dumb. Delicious. Play the video. Making them some of the most fearsome aquatic builds it's in the like, game. Stop touching On me! On the herbivore side of things, Hemipterans tend to fare a bit worse. They usually Fair. still have fairly low mobility and low stealth, and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impenetrable as some of the builds higher on this list. They tend to rely on a chemical defense similar to some phasmids, which is where they get the name stink bugs oh, from. God. However, similar to phasmids, these defenses also tend to be a bit lacking and often fail to deter attackers. So certainly a group with some standout members and fine for Great. XP farming, but still nothing too broken. Okay. Are you ready? 
And topping off B tier, oh, we have the Neuroptera. Piece. A rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic looking base stats. Annoying. Genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. <laughs> However, looking at the final form of this build paints a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. Okay. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, is a brutally effective predator what build for any player who prefers the camping playstyle. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Antlions have a devastating, venomous bite which they use to one-shot unsuspecting players before Damn. draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Damn. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, their passive stealth rating is extremely high, making their ambush play style unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the prey gets caught in their trap, the antlion even has the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target, <laughs> making escape a near impossibility. I have an entire video dedicated to the overpowered abilities of Neuropteran larvae, but in short, they are what the Earwig pretends to be. If you yeah. took the Earwig Circe, put them in front, and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have an ant line. So why up. the weak adult form? Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. Mm -hmm. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form, and really only exist to be a vessel that allows yep. players to find each other yep. and complete the mating questline something they lack the ability to do in their much less mobile larval form. So while I do think it'd be more impressive if they didn't take such a massive cut to their power level during their final level up, mm -hmm. there's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an absolute menace to encounter. And they said I'm here for a good time, not for a long time. Yeah, see, that's one thing that I'm talking about though, with a lot of these builds. Humans have a tendency to think, okay, the longer you're around, the more you level up, the better it gets, but not necessarily. You peak where you peak, and right. then the rest is just about longevity, baby. Yeah. It's just a necessary part in the process. You grow old, don't need to eat. <laughs> don't focus on eating. You ain't hungry no goddamn you more. <laughs> you ate your whole life. You go do it, you go do the hanky panky, you know, go kick the bucket. That's your job. Mantis! At the bottom of A tier, we have a personal favorite of mine, the Mantis. Mantises have a fairly straightforward playstyle consisting of slashing and grabbing their targets using so powerful dope. spiked raptorial forelimbs. If we take a look at the Mantis' stats, we see that the Mantis has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat similar to that of a walking stick, which it desperately needs in order to be able to get within striking oh. range of its targets. Its clumsy flight and slow ground movement speed makes chasing prey basically impossible. <laughs> However, what they lack in movement speed, they easily make up for with strike speed. Oh. The Mantis's strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly oh evasive. Like as boxing. powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't immobilize the target, and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. And while the Mantis's large size enables it to tank most counterattacks, oh. Attacking a venomous target can oh. end up being a serious blunder for a Mantis player. Oh, oh no. So definitely a powerful high tier predator, but not one that's so invincible that Mantis oh, mains can get Watch careless. So terrible. Next flies. in A tier, we have the flies. flies. This does get a bit confusing due to the amount of other yeah, builds that use you. the word fly in their name. Okay. But this group, the true flies, are Ooh. defined by a very specific feature. True flies only have two wings. Okay. This might seem like a major trade off. But while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return is more than worth the risk. Instead of a second pair of wings, flies swap them out for Haltiers, a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them all but impossible to land a hit on midair, and also enables predator fly variants such as the robber fly to launch incredibly precise attacks mid-flight and take nuts. down targets that would normally be too powerful to confront head-on, but are unable to effectively counterattack during flight. However, most flies are either scavengers or parasites, using their quick mobility and superior reaction speed Good to stuff. weave past the defenses and avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. While they do have an extremely short lifespan, there's no denying that they make the most of the time they do have and are one of the most efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. Damn, bro. But while flies are excellent aerial combatants, they are no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. Which is? One second, till we get there, uh -huh. cliffhanger! Flies are extremely impressive with their speed. It's one of the fastest insects 
the most agile, like for acceleration. Uh, and it's always impressive to me. It blows my mind, actually, how quick flies can be. It's just as impressive. Kill them all. I'm just saying. It really is just no, so I, impressive. No, I, as annoying as flies are, you have to be fucking impressed when you go to kill a fly and you fucking can't. Dude, that's you know? what makes them so annoying is that they know they can wait for the last possible second to move. You don't stress that fly out. No, he's not, he's worried, not about worried about, about you. you at all. At all. He'll fly. He'll buzz. If you piss up, you ever piss a fly off and he's just buzzing in your area because you hit it once. Right. He's like, do it again, bitch. Do it. You fucking won't. You can't. I'll be here all year. And he is. You got to go to the next room. <laughs> a fly will run you out of your goddamn house. Dragonfly! The Dragonfly is similar to the Crocodile in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever that existed in the game. Statement it's already hear. such an efficient build that across several balance patches and game expansions, the Dragonfly has seen very few changes to its core strategy. They simply aren't necessary, as the Dragonfly is already equipped to deal with just about anything the devs throw at it. Wow. Ooh. So what is it about the Dragonfly that has given it such a- Got him in air stalling, dude. <laughs> just like not flying for a second, just to float for us. Competitive sick. edge. Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuverability of any build in the game, and the highest top flight speed of any insect. Unlike most insects, dragonflies have specced into the ability to move their wings independently of each other, which yeah. grants them the ability to move in any direction without needing to turn and face that doing, direction, sir? meaning Whenever they can strafe mid-flight and even fly them. backwards. This ability makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. So this is a high commitment, high Got reward playstyle. In order to ensure a proper payoff for their incredible agility, dragonflies have also specced into what is arguably the best vision of any arthropod extremely large, high-resolution eyes that take up basically their entire head. <laughs> granting them full 360-degree vision. That's cool, man! This allows them to track all potential targets around them with ease, and allows them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. <laughs> Unlike many of the other builds on this list, which either have a powerful larval form but a weak adult form, right. or a powerful adult form that can only achieve this after enduring an extremely vulnerable <laughs> early game, the dragonfly is a high-tier predator in both forms. While everyone knows they dominate the skies when they reach their max level, right. what you might not know is that as nymphs, dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game, able to one-shot similarly-sized fish and amphibian players. Now, while it was tempting to put dragonflies in S tier, they do have a few shortcomings. While they are generally able to see approaching Oof. predators before it's too late, they Oof. aren't particularly good at avoiding accidentally flying into dangerous situations. Damn. They're easily trapped by spiderwebs and are often snatched out of the air when flying too close to another player. In addition, dragonflies cannot walk, meaning that their energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they really? need to reposition never... themselves. I never realized that. I have never seen a dragonfly walk before. Yeah, they, they stand. They are, they hug things. That's it. Huh. Not that devastating of a weakness, but it's enough that this ancient build can't quite break into S tier. Yeah. First in S tier, we have the beetle. The Come beetle on. is the epitome of the insect build. A bunch. I can tolerate beetles. They're freaking cool, man. You know, my thing with beetles hmm. is I confuse beetles with roaches. Yeah. Roaches and beetles are interchangeable for me. Right, right. I understand that they're different, but I'm just saying. Yeah. That's, but his, beetles are pretty cool. His like face if I, is grotesque, but he's awesome. If I saw this beetle, I, you know, I would be impressed before I saw it, stepped on it. If you saw it on you. No, he's dying. <laughs> like if I saw it out in nature, like I'd probably let him live his life. Yeah, let him but like if I see a roach out in nature, I also let him live its life. I am I don't go around bugs, but the the animosity is there. Yeah, you little bitch. <laughs> of extraordinarily powerful abilities that seem like they shouldn't really function properly when used in conjunction with each other, <laughs> yet somehow actually end up synergizing well, unbelievably Earth. well. Beetles are I'm the out. premier tanks of the insect faction, with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. It has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive ants without taking any damage, something that even many reptiles and amphibians can't get True. away with. Yeah. Now, typically when a build is heavily invested into defenses like this, it has to make a lot of sacrifices in its other stats. Right. This is the opposite of what we see in the beetle build. 
Be As in addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it also excels in several other metrics. I do like The most that. obvious of which is its power stat. Beetles can obliterate their enemies in combat oh. using powerful oh. jaws and oh. explosive chemical weapons. Oh. Their ability to bulldoze opponents with their forward-facing weaponry is hard to overstate. But oh in my, my opinion, God, their real damage him. potential comes from beetles which possess the ability to blast their attackers with a toxic or acidic chemical burst. That's crazy. But that's not where the craziness stops, because although you'd probably expect a high power tank to be a slow lumbering build, uh -huh. beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speedy. speed of any insect. And if that weren't enough, Despite often having heavy horns they or giant fight. mandibles, packing uh. a tank full of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor, and strapped with enough muscle to move what objects far, Earth? far above their Just weight cause. class, the beetle is still able to fly without much issue. Now, they did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor, so they can't right. perform the advanced aerobatics that dragonflies and houseflies can. Uh -huh. But the ability to get from point A to point B via flight is still extremely valuable, both for escaping danger and for reaching valuable points of interest. In short, beetles have essentially <laughs> yeah. every ability they could ask for. They are an amalgamation of everything that makes the insect faction so powerful. And so it's no surprise that beetle species comprise a whopping 25% of all species in the game. Jesus They're so versatile and adaptable Crazy. that a beetle player can find a niche in essentially any server. Right. They truly are the ultimate insect and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful abilities nope. is, ultimately the beetle is still lacking the most powerful insect ability of them all, nope. eusociality. Now I have an entire Eusoci video dedicated yeah. to explaining just how broken this ability is, yep. and there's no question that the insects that incorporate it into their game plan simply dominate all in their path. Termite. Now oh, technically, termites are a variant of the cockroach build but they have such a unique and powerful playstyle that lumping them in with mid-tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. Okay. The termite queen is the longest lived insect in the game, yeah, with a lifespan near that gross. of a human or elephant. Sorry. Yeah, it's and gross. it spends these many decades building one of the most powerful armies the game has ever seen. These termite armies are able to Jesus. construct some of the most well-fortified bases in the game, giving even beaver dams and human skyscrapers a run for their money. Not only do they build incredible bases, but termites Disgusting. literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's ability to gather resources. They will pave paths and build ramps and bridges to important resource <laughs> deposits. This efficiency allows them to support a huge army and command vast territories. Termites, despite being most closely related to cockroaches, uh -huh. have a combat style that is actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which if you've seen my snake huh. tier list, you'd know is also a top tier build. Termites can accurately fire acid from a needle-like horn on their face, what? dealing heavy damage to anything caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws instead of acid sprayers on their head, and are crucial for defending their face from an onslaught of invaders. Oh. Termites are a somewhat imbalanced build, with crazy powerful forward-facing weaponry, but wow. extremely vulnerable abdomens with no armor at all. Ew. This means that oftentimes, despite Ew. a larger size, they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. Got it. Not usually an issue, as termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation, which covers the weak points of individual members. So certainly not a bad enough Ooh, weakness I'm to so negate the top tier status of eusociality. But this weakness does mean that I gotta give the top spot to the other eusocial Ants. insect faction. Ants. 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 Bees and wasps. Okay, okay, that makes me happy. Fuck wasps. I was about to but... say, I'm, bees are top tier, I thought. But they're all together. Anoptera is the group of insects that includes ants, bees, and wasps. Unlike termites, these insects are a bit more well-rounded. Yeah. yeah, fuck wasps. What else is on here? Having decent armor all over, and tend to have both forward and rear-facing weaponry, yep. with most Hymenopterans packing strong jaws and a venomous stinger. Yep. The wasps' signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage <laughs> on their own intimidation I am fear. You social hymenopterans can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. This is insane. They can launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. <laughs> they can capture- Whoa. <laughs> pull his head off and they all go pull his head off.
we have seen some of the most gruesome deaths in this video. Yeah, it's been pretty ma- pretty messed up, man. Got a dude's insides oh getting eaten my out. Oh, God. Homie's head getting twisted off. Your prisoners Crazy. cross major barriers and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Yep. Ants in particular are oh. masters of both empire building and military tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in their own territory. They busy, So, man. while beetles may take up a larger percentage of total insect variants, yeah. termites and ants both vastly outnumber any other insect build. And while I don't base my tier lists purely off of population, there's no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredibly powerful strategies and their ability to bend their environment to their advantage. In fact, the only genuine threats to you social players tend to be invaders disguising themselves as members of their own colony, but are really there to disrupt, steal, and attack. Many spider, hemiptera, and mantis mains adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. Something similar happens when you browse the internet without using NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. As you browse, trackers latch onto your system and follow you from one page. Oh my God. Wow, wow. Well, guys, let me tell you, I was enthralled from start to finish. And I love that he covered some other insects that weren't involved in some of the other videos. I really love that part. This entire video gave me the ick. The whole video? The whole video. Okay, but there was that- Very uncomfortable. But there was that part where they showed you the roach crawling underneath the thing. That's pretty gross. But then you got to see the dragonfly kind of zipping around. That's pretty cool. Okay, the dragonfly wasn't so bad. You got to see the fly up close. That's just pretty gross. Uh-huh. But then you got to see the stick bug do this, <laughs> you know? And that's pretty cool. You know what? You're right. There were there were some not so bad parts of this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still don't like bugs. Okay, what's your favorite bug from the video? Mm, ladybug. The ladybug, a part of the beetle faction. You got to see a ladybug fly around a little bit, fend off some defenders. I've been peed attackers, on by so I mean. many ladybugs. That's true. <laughs> That's just factually true. I don't true. know why they always just pee on you. Lad- ladybugs be pissing on people, bro. <laughs> just If you didn't know what that was, that's what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's... Getting lit. We'll see you guys in the next Beetle video because it's coming. Oh my God. I feel like it's on the way. <laughs>